Right, hi there. Oh, my head's cut off. Let me get a chair. Hello. If you clicked on this video, I'm going to go ahead and assume you read the title and you are interested in one of these older combination planar thickness of models. You might even be interested in this specific one, which is the Kitty 636, and you want to know if it's worth it. So in terms of the important things you probably care about, I paid £245 for this machine, which as far as I've been able to tell, is excellent value for money, especially for a machine that's in the condition that this one is in. I bought this from a guy that was a furniture maker by trade, and he actually bought it from new. So I've bought this with all the parts, which is an uncommon thing to do or to get when you buy one of these secondhand machines. Now I did have to replace the blades. Now they cost 25 quid off eBay, so it wasn't much. I guess that brings the total cost of 270 pounds to have this in usable working order. But the biggest pain of the whole process was actually just finding one. If you're not buying new, you rely on one of these popping up a marketplace that is within your price range, uh, working, and also within a distance that's reasonable to drive and pick it up. I spent six months looking for one of these machines. I missed out on a few that were nearby and met all those criteria just because I wasn't quick enough to message. But eventually I found this. I only had to drive 40 minutes to get it. But my warning to you is if you're doing the same thing, be prepared to play a game of patience with it. Uh, you might have to wait months for one to come up that meets all those criteria to make it worth your time to go and pick one up. Without one of these machines, the key skill or ability you're missing is to take rough cut lumber or really any wood for that matter and convert it or process it into the exact dimensions you need for a project. If you're starting out like I am and you haven't got the money to buy lots of expensive wood, you might do what I do, which is to buy oh, this is heavy. a lot of your wood from Marketplace. Like I bought this giant block of unknown wood because the guy who sold it to me doesn't actually know. When I bought it from him, it was rough uh, like this. It wasn't in a ready to use state, at least not for a, a finished product. And eventually what I'm going to do is get it into, you know, this nice exposed fresh wood, which will be usable in a project. And that's where this tool is going to come in. Now you'll probably do what I did when I decided I needed one and Google buy planar thicknesser and a bunch of new ones will come up and you'll realize very quickly that new ones cost a lot of money. At least they cost a lot of money if you want one with any capacity that is uh, sufficient to do larger projects. So this one's a 260 mil bed and to get one with that size bed new, it costs a multiple of what I can actually afford. So for me, it was always gonna be a secondhand machine like this one. Anyway, that's a lot of babble to start the video with. And to be honest, I'm not actually that comfortable talking on camera, I'm learning. But yeah, the clips that follow, they are the process of me getting it in, setting it up, changing the blades, figuring out how you even change between the different modes, and then any useful tips and tricks I can give you that might be worth your time considering if you are gonna get one of these. You want to grab this side, there's more of a grip. Yeah. I'll do a deadlift. Oh, <laughs> <Who's it? laughs> like, wait! Okay. <laughs> on the inside. Bollocks. You're wondering, am I mechanically minded? I'm struggling to put the leg on, so no. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Look at that. One leg. I heard that washers have a direction. Seems wrong. As I was reading a forum about these, the advice seems to be don't strip them down when you get them. Just use it and when something goes wrong, strip it down. I'm going to follow that advice because I'm lazy and don't, wouldn't know what I was doing if I took it apart so it wouldn't go back together. I like to make tasks uh, more difficult than they are, or at least I like to make them look more difficult than they are. Shit. Oh, look at that. Done. Uh -huh. I can lift it on my shoulder. Yes, it is. Just in my neck. <laughs> Woo! Ow. Are you sure? Nice. 
Excellent. Yeah. Pretty strong. All right, figure out how to put the fence on. Uh -huh. So I think it's fairly easy, actually. I think the fence just slides on with this pole. Do that. Oh, lovely. Lock that in. Look at that. What's the odds it's not square? It is most certainly not square. So I think you undo this nut. Oh, that's bigger than that. Okay. Lucy? Um, yes. Power. Nice. Same down there. So, setting the uh, thickness up, all I did is took the fence off, reverse what I showed you earlier. This plate comes up by by undoing that, so planar mode, undo that, this lifts, thickness mode. I've been trying to work out how you raise and lower, I think it's the bed you raise and lower. I think it's this, I think that this pops on there. Aha! Ah, look at that. You can't probably see what's happening. Let me go in a bit. Thickness of bed is coming up. I have no idea if this is correct. Now I've got this. It looks like it goes into the tray. It goes in there. All right, so that's protection from the. That's quite good. Theory is that'll be 28 mil thick now. I think that's at 29. Okay, that is 29 mil. Buddy hell, we're in business. You can see it's it's flat, but when you catch the light, you can see all these grooves. Look, oh yeah, there you can see it there. So where there was divots in the blade, it's left all these grooves and channels and horrible bits that I could send out, but changing the blade should fix it. can see how you undo them. See this spin. I don't know what to do next. I think I feel like I should, I should be able to lock this somehow. I don't think you can. Okay, so here's what I'm dealing with. Here's the blade. And then I'm pretty sure these are a series of, I don't know, they're grub screws. I don't know what you call them. And then I guess somehow you can get something onto this. Do some little twisties. And then that should pop out. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm gonna do. Magic 10. Oh. Oh, he's a bit stiff. Lefty Lucy. Oh, it moved. Okay. Okay. Don't know if. Oh, the whole the whole thing's moving. Oh, oh, it lifts. In which case, I'm just gonna. Whoa! Excellent. Okay. What do I do now? It came out that way. I remember that. Very fancy. So let's stick it in. I think it's that way. Okay. Oh. It's on a spring. Is that a thing? Or is there something in there that shouldn't be? Huh. God knows. Right. It's got to pass the five mil test. So what I've done is I've swapped it over to the side with the old blade. You can see there's a ding there. So this is the old, not the new blade. And what you want to do is you want to rotate it until the blade touches your first mark, which in this case is mark number one. You can see there I've got it touching and moving the wood just at mark number one. So move it one full rotation like I've just done there. And when it comes back around, the blade should touch the wood at point number two or five millimeters. And look at that. Perfect. It's now starting to move it. So I'm going to move it again. And I'm going to then hopefully see it catch at point number three. And there you go. Perfect. So the blades in there are set perfectly. Now, just to get this blade to do the same thing. I guess it's just going to be go until it's right, I guess. <laughs> Right, it's a new day. In fact, it's uh, 
a few weeks later. I have a different beard. Um, and this still doesn't fit, which isn't good. So let's try and do it. I'm trying to set one side here. This side here is different level. And I can't really set one at a time because, I don't know, it doesn't work. When I grip it, it just moves the whole thing in, so it doesn't work. So I've been thinking, doing some thinkies. So scrap of MDF, put it on, seems fairly flat. So I'm going to move it up to the planer blade. Right, so I'm going to push the blade in, put this flat thing on it. Now, my theory is, because I've got it held flat, it will at least be uniform across the whole thing. So I'm just going to tighten down two of them. So the blade is in, it is a uniform height. Now I'll get my test block. I will put it on and it isn't getting caught at all, but it is at least uniform. So this is going to work. Springy once more. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to show you what I was doing there while I was lining up. So you'll see I have these marks, which are the center line of the barrel, at least I hope they are. So I started off by aligning this lip to the two points. You can see that kind of, see? So I aligned those, put the thing on, it was moving it too far there. I was moving it 12 mil when I had it there. So then I moved the blade to there. And of course, because that's the blade at the highest point, it wasn't catching at all. So then I've subdivided the two like that, and it seemed to still not be catching at all. So I've moved it a little bit forward so that this line here is sat just ahead of this one. And then set the blade there. So let's give it a go again. Let's see, come on, let's get this first time. Grab, move, oh, it's moved it by six. Pretty good. That's moved it by five. Try this end. Whoa, I moved it by, that moved it more like 10. Oh, there you go, moved it by five. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up all the other bolts. So I'm gonna run that face through like that. bits. Good job on the blades. Let's use the thicknesser. Here's the moment of truth though. I've set it to 28. It's come out as 28 exactly. Here we go, let's offer you some proof. 28. Well we eventually got there but now we have a fully functioning planar thicknesser. Here's the gear I was changing. So you take it, you push it up, you push it in, push it down, in gear. Here's where you measure. So you can see here's the bed I fed it in through. It's got this little gold yellow gauge. I've lined that up to the 28 mark that you can just see there. Here is the knob where you put the twisty handle thing, that bad boy. This here is your anti-kickback mechanism, rubberized little bits. They'll just stop the wood from shooting back out. Okay, so that's good. I think we've got everything working now, and I'm going to put it back into planar mode. We're going to see if I can take a bit of wood that's pretty not straight and get something out of it that would be joinable. Jointable. I don't know. But anyway. Uh, so we're in jointer mode again, and I'm going to find a bit of wood. Right, here's a bit of wood. There you go, it sort of curves that way. And I'm going to try and run it through. That one's actually quite bowed. So we'll see how this goes, but yeah. So there you can see a very smooth and perfectly flat one face, which is what it does in the first instance. And you can see it's a lot thicker here in the middle than it is on the edges. So next thing to do is to get one of these edges square to it. Uh, I'll go for the one that's least square, maybe this one. I'm going to do that by running this face that I've just planed on the fence, which I know is square to the table because I checked it earlier. Okay, so now I've got one flat face and one edge that is 90 degrees to that face. That there should be a 90 degree angle. So all I need to do now is run this side up through the thicknesser. So this side running flat on the base. Thickness. 90 
haven't seen. Ah, oh, probably that's seen. Huh, that's where it's meant to be. Then I can still use that. Top tip. So I can lock that down. All right, we now have a perfectly flat board, as you can see, with one perfectly 90 degree edge. It's uniformly thick across the whole way. And we've got one edge that isn't. So the final thing to do is to rip it down to that final width on our table saw, which we can do now. All right, so there's my rough edge. That's gonna go on the outside of the cut. Okay. So we've got a bit of wood that is square on all four sides. It's flat, it's square. I could now use that to build anything I wanted really. Good stuff.